What's going on, cousins? It's me, your homie, your friend, your boy, your next door neighbor, maybe even your co-worker. Well, not right about now. If we fuck with each other that way, AJ Red, I'm back again with another episode of the AJ Red Show. And today we're going to be covering uh, Season 10, Episode 5 of Married to Medicine. But before we get into all that, please, if this is your first video, please go ahead now and take, a, take the time to go ahead and hit that subscribe bell. So that when I upload these videos or go live, you can be one of the first ones to secondly drop down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about the episode in which I'm discussing, the video, whatever the topic, and what you thought about my thoughts on it. Please drop down there and give me your opinion about the video. Also, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. That's the like button. They say that helps me out a lot. We'll figure that out later on down the road. Last but not least, please make sure to share these videos with somebody. Share them with your other cousins. Please do not share them with children. As I tell y'all all the time, my conversation is not for child consumption. But jumping right into the episode, I know I'm a little bit late on the episode. I got a, a lot of things in the brew and I got to get on here and do another video right after I get off with this one. But um, I still want to keep up with the calls. I seen everybody's put their shit out, but guess what? It ain't AJ Red. So ready to talk about it? Let's do it. All right. But anyway, so yes, episode five of season uh, 10 of Married to Medicine. So as you know, Quad um, Quad had been off the scene for quite a while with the ladies. She hadn't really been making but a few minor appearances in different episodes, I think starting with episode three. Um, she had not been around a whole lot. Um, and so this particular episode, Phaedra says she thought it was a good idea to uh, reintroduce Quad to the ladies because she wanted them to remember the staple um, that uh, that Quad uh, has made within the group and the show. And uh, you can't help but to kind of agree with, with Phaedra. When she met with Dr. Jackie and, um, who was it, uh, Dr. Jackie and, and Heavenly at her house. And, you know, the ladies were like, you know, why in the fuck would you even bring this lady to um, her ex-husband, soon to be wives uh, bachelorette party and Phaedra simply said I mean shit the spirit was already hitting y'all y'all was already fucked up so ain't like anything I was going to do which was add quad to the equation wasn't going to make anything any worse and she said also into a, into, a, into a addition to add to that she said that basically all you bitches been asking about quad trying to see what she was and what she's been or what she's doing she said I found it quite befitting to go ahead and invite the bitch on down to the thing which she did now Dr. Heavenly uh, and Dr. Jackie gave Phaedra this, this stank look and basically reassured her, you know, a question that we all would have, if been asked, would have, I know, a definitive answer of, basically, would you want your um, your ex, your ex's ex showing up to an event of yours at any point in time? And Phaedra was pretty much like, no, as all of the other women on the same, on the, on the platform would feel the same way. Um, but getting to episode five, Phaedra went around, you know, this was the premise of the of the episode, basically. Phaedra went around um, and, and had a, a, a function. And she went around inviting all the ladies to this function. She went out, you know, in her goth her gothic outfit. And she had a gentleman that she that works for her as, I guess, as a butler or her maid or her sex companion. I don't know the fuck he is, allegedly. But she had him go out and deliver the invitation to everyone in this black briefcase. Now, let me tell you. The Housewives franchise, a lot of these women have a very peculiar way and a very uh, unique way of sending out invitations. We've seen them do it time and time again. We've seen Candy send um, men to the door and women to the door half naked for an event, you know, an invite. And I can honestly say, you know, the way that they do this, it's, um, they, they really take time to put some thought into it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and it's, it's, it's geared towards the event and I think more people honestly should get into it. I mean, for birthday parties and shit, you know, people used to send out invitations back in the day for Christmas parties, birthday parties, and all that different stuff. I remember myself going to Walmart and getting the fucking cards and handwriting them all out and then, you know, handing them out to people or mailing them and shit like that. Don't nobody do that shit no more. So this is a new way, I guess, of inviting someone to a function that you are um, actually having. And to me, it was kind of cute. You know, she sat in the car as the... As the, the gothic uh, Elvira, she said, you know, pretty much sending uh, her ghouls out to um, send this invite, to deliver this invite to the ladies at their front door. And, of course, let's not forget that Phaedra is the owner and, um, and operator of a funeral home over in Georgia. So the event basically was, 
was was held at the funeral home. Now, me personally, I can honestly tell you, they must have started like 11 o'clock when they looked at the time. It was like 10 something, everybody pulling up. Me personally, bitch, I don't want to be in the funeral home in the daytime, okay? I ain't coming. And whatever antics or whatever uh, 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 fuckery or whatever kind of foolery or kind of stunts and shows you trying to pull up in a funeral home at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, I don't give a fuck how much sage you done lit. I don't give a fuck how many candles you done boinked over, over in that motherfucker. I don't give a fuck how much holy water you done splashed around the walls. I don't give a fuck how much you tell me I need to worry about the living more than the dead. The bottom line is, I ain't gonna show up, okay? And the, the way it was presented was like it was a funeral, as you can see from the background here. And apparently, as we've been seeing the, the trailers and whatnot of Marriage to Medicine before it hit, we've seen this, we've, we've seen this scene before where there was somebody coming out of the casket. We didn't know who the fuck it was, right? Everybody was trying to figure out who it was and everybody had their ideas and thoughts on who it could have been. Well, surprise, surprise, you know, she lives, long live uh, Quad Webb, you know what I'm saying? So basically, Phaedra got with, with Quad apparently to, to set up this event to bring the ladies out to um, say, basically, they gave this grand old uh, speech about she was a phoenix coming back from uh, the ashes and, you know, rising and all of this stuff and how a phoenix is more beautiful after they've burned and come back and all this different stuff from, uh, from death. And everybody got up in there and sat down and shit and trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Phaedra got up and did a whole ceremony. She did a eulogy before the body came in. Then they dragged Quad motherfucking ass down the aisle in the box and, and presented her before the church. Now, that's my second thing. First of all, bitch, I'm claustrophobic. Claustrophobic, and I got anxiety. Because if I tell you about the last flight I took back from Denver, I guarantee you I'm probably going to laugh and tease the fuck out of me. So i probably tell you about that another day. But the bottom line is... As far as getting up in that motherfucking box before my time, I don't give a fuck what you paying. You got to be paying six to nine to ten figures for me to get up in a box. And then you close that motherfucker on me talking about some hold your breath or wait a minute. Let me give you some cashews in this bitch and a shot. No, that's not going to work for me because nine times out of ten, that's going to send my anxiety through the motherfucking roof. So put me in a box. I don't give a fuck how it's designed. I don't give a fuck about the amount of time being in there. I'm not getting in there to lay down to be fitted for that motherfucker. And I damn sure ain't finna live in there alive for you to drag me down the aisle to make a motherfucking uh, point. The dramatics were way off the Richter scale in this episode, y'all. So, they drag the body out, the living body in the dead uh, body uh, uh, box. It comes out, they bust the box open and shit, as you can see, uh, full panel. And then she, she sits up in the thing and starts talking to the people and shit and telling the ladies, you know, welcome and yada, 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 and spits back and spaghetti and all this other bullshit. Well, somewhere along the way, of course, she had to get the fuck out the box and then come out there and address the people, you know, head on. So she got the fellas to help her out the box. She stood up again and gave this grandiose speech about basically how she wanted to end and, and, and let old ways and old things and old habits and old rumors and all of that shit die to start anew or fresh with the ladies in the room. And she then also went individually to each lady um, in the room, you know, uh, Dr. Jackie, uh, Heavenly. Uh, some, I, I don't even think she got to Simone, but uh, even with Sweet T, with Sweet T wasn't, wasn't even fucking invited. Talia decided to take, to, uh, take upon herself and invite Sweet T, old goofy looking ass, uh, Miss did look good, did look good, invite her on down to the thing and have her come in there so she can crash the party. So I guess they seem like they're getting back at Quad and Phaedra for coming to uh, the Bachelorette party and all this shit unannounced and crashing the Bachelorette party. Okay. Childish as fuck, but okay, I see where it's headed. She addressed Sweet Tea and let her know that there's no hard feelings. I want you to know that I'm cool with you. And this is the second time they're having this motherfucking dialogue, the two of them, right? Selling their differences and throwing everything, you know, selling the dust, bearing the hatch, whatever the fuck you want to call it. This is their second time having this, uh, this little seance <clears throat> between the two of them. Somewhere along the way, of course, she saved Tasha, uh, Tasha, I keep saying Tasha, Toya for last. And she got to Toya, and Toya was still in this bitter bitch moment. To the point, it's like I'm looking at Toya saying, okay, you sitting there making it seem like all the shit and the rumors that went on about you, you still holding steadfast to that old bullshit about you sleeping with uh, people in the neighborhood and about you stealing and all this other shit. My whole thing is this. I'm, I'm a man of disbelief. First of all, you can say what the fuck you want to say about me. You can accuse me of what the fuck you want to accuse me of. First of all, I'm not worried. If I ain't done it, 
I, in my heart of hearts, I'm not worried about you getting no evidence. I'm not worried about you. You can yap your motherfucking dick suckers all you want about it because at the end of the day, there's no validity to it and there's no truth. So I really wouldn't be mad with you about something that are so heated about, you know, with you about something that really never took place. Now, yes, I'm, a, I'm really irritated about the rumor that you put out on me. You know what I'm saying? But let's just be honest and look at it from, from, a, from a different standpoint. We all know that these ladies have a fucking tendency to act like children, to act like little spoiled ass rich girls um, in high school, just grown ass women with menstruals and, and children and all this shit. Some of them soon to be having grandchildren on the fucking way. So education does not equal uh, uh, um, maturity. OK, so let's let's get that out of the way. Now, there's a bunch of educated motherfucking fools roaming the streets around here in your in, in your local office, taking care of your business handling your private stuff and all this shit a bunch of educated fucking dummies they can do a whole lot of shit down there to the job and when it comes to a certain profession but ask them goofy motherfuckers to put an email together asking to hook up a, I said a BCR we don't do that shit no more not even a DVD asking to set the iPad up or some you know simple shit asking to, to, to it's, it's just like my mama said educated fool and y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about I ain't gotta keep going on with what that looks like I'm pretty sure y'all know what that is plenty of y'all have, have worked with them you're probably working with that motherfucker sitting next to that son of a bitch right now looking at that dumb bitch. But these ladies are very childish. And Toya just seems to have this fire burning in her chest for Quad. And, and Quad seems to want to put out that fire with a little friendliness or a little um, let's, let's bury the hatchet kind of mentality. Um... We grown women. Let's start over fresh, as we always do each season. Um, you said a lot. Tell you to say shit about everybody on the motherfucking show. Everybody on the show. You was talking about other motherfuckers sleeping around here, there, and, and and everywhere else. So let's not sit up here and act like you haven't dished out your 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 uh your portion of rumors about the ladies, other ladies on the platform. So fucking get real. At the end of the day, the bottom line is is, is I see that. Maybe there is some validity to, to what uh, Quad was saying, that there are some women on the platform, mainly Toya, that has to have a husband or a man in any stature to help her maintain a certain life because she's not strong enough. She's not uh, wise enough. She's not smart enough. She's not uh, that go-getter. She's not that girl that will actually go out here and get it on her own. So, Because let's be honest, all that shit Gregory said about Quad... You know, I've been taking care of you ever since the day we first met. Quad turned around and looked at him real motherfucking crazy. But at the end of the day, what did she do? She divorced that, that peps weak ass motherfucking idiot with them thick ass ankles. And she went on about her business and set out on her own journey. And she made a name for herself. So with that being said, now she's amongst the ladies in the group. And everything that Talia or anybody else has, she now has as well. But it's all made off of her own coin off of her own ability to get out there and showcase what she can actually do and what her talents are. Unlike Toya, just like they sit up there and say professional uh, tennis players and all that shit. Toya ain't no professional tennis player. Toya's a professional drunk. She's a professional wine drinker. That's what the fuck she like to do, sit around and drink wine and probably get a half fix and spend uh, 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 Eugene's money. Because I, I haven't taken the time to look, out, uh, look up and see what the fuck the wine sales are grossing or how it's looking for her. But I'm pretty sure it still doesn't equate to what Eugene is and has been bringing in, you know, pretty much, I'm sure, for the duration of their marriage. So at the end of the day, I do see a lot of the shit being revealed that Quad was talking about during the time that she was mentioning divorcing Gregory and saying when she was getting into it with Toya back in the time that Toya was jealous. Toya is jealous that she went out there and she made it on her own. Whether it be cookbooks, sister circle, whatever the fuck her appearances, everything that she has done, Quad has got it on her own coin. Now, whether she got anything in a divorce settlement with uh, Greg, I do not know. Quite frankly, we know she ain't got the motherfucking house because Sweet Tea over there redecorating that motherfucker right now. But somewhere along the way, you know, during her speech, I can't remember exactly what took place, but Heavenly and Sweet Tea ended up exchanging words. You know, over some bullshit. And that's the part where Sweet Tea was telling everybody, well, didn't you, didn't you go upside your husband's head with a skillet? First of all, Heavenly, you better not be over there putting your motherfucking hands on, on Dr. Damon. 
He ain't did you nothing, bitch. Don't you be over there putting your motherfucking cat scratches on Dr. Damon. I'll call the police on you, bitch. Now, you crazy, but you ain't that crazy. Keep your hands off that man. That's what I be trying to tell y'all. And we was talking about women ain't got no business addressing men. If you did him in the head with a skill, you should have found a motherfucking grit pot and bust you upside the fucking head. No, I don't condone no violence, but bitch, you skidded me, I'm going to pot your motherfucking ass right back, or vice versa. So the bottom line is, keep your motherfucking hands to yourself. So somewhere along the way, they couldn't get along too well. Toy was not willing to start a fresh, start a new accord. He came to the realization and the understanding that Toy was not here for the reconciliation. She was not here for the kumbaya session. She wasn't here for the motherfucking funeral. She was probably here for Quad's death. Now, had they opened that box and Quad been in that bitch and bombed and stiff as a boy and light as a feather, she'd have probably been satisfied. I don't know. You know, had Quad not popped up out of the motherfucker to tell everybody her story and, you know, all these theatrics she used to, to get everybody's attention, you know, she probably would have been better off laying up in the basket. And, and letting everybody come throw a rose in the bucket and keep on motherfucking pushing. Uh, Talia probably was going to throw the thorns from the rose in the motherfucking bucket and keep on going. Because that's all she ever does anyway when it comes to the two of them. She's presented with the rose like the bachelor bitch. But she turn around and all she wants off is the thorns. And them thorns are to turn around and stick you right in your back of your ass when she's done. Sometimes she'll stick that motherfucker in your face. Especially with the situation with Quad. She ain't being discreet about her dislike for, for Quad. She's being very outspoken about the issues that she has with Quad. If it's not done vocally, it's done in her gestures, her facial uh, um, gestures and uh, body language and all that shit. So coming to a conclusion in that sector, knowing that they weren't going to get any resolution, the girls move on to what everybody usually has all kind of peace and harmony over. Dinner, you know, college greens and cornbread and you know, uh, fried chicken, which looked like it came from Popeye's. I don't know if Quad cooked it up. It came down there from Popeye's or what. But it looked of uh, the Popeye's persuasion to me. But anyway, um, you know, they went back there like you do at the have a black funeral. You're going back there in, in, in the repass hall. And you break out the good china and shit, you know, Dixie made and whatnot. And, and, and then hefty. And then you start serving the peoples up. And you get to sitting down. And you, you know, you, you get to conversating. <clears throat> That's my word. I don't give a fuck if y'all like it. It ain't got to be in the dictionary. They put up the stupid shit in the first place. But they got to talking. And the conversation ensued pretty much Quad was saying, basically, I, I feel like I made a headway with a lot of the ladies tonight. You know, speaking this out to them. You know, kind of calling them out one by one, saying, you know, I'm sorry about the issues we had because one of the biggest the biggest issues they had with Quad is that Quad would ghost their motherfucking ass. Which is not a good tactic to be calling yourself a friend. Even if you don't deal with certain motherfuckers that's in the group, those that you hold true to and that you stand 10 toes down deep for and loyal to, you still reach out to them bitches on a weekly basis. Girl, I'm about to go to Zimbabwe. Girl, I'm about to go over here to Jamaica. Or I'm about to go see what the good wall, great wall look like in China. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go back to my roots in Africa and see what I can fix myself up and figure out what I got going on. I've been blocking the picture all the time because she looked too good. I'm going to you know, let it shine. All the ladies look good, but... Um, what was I saying? Um... So the chicken and whatnot, I think I was somewhere around about that. I don't think I'm right on point. But, yeah, so she was addressing the ladies, you know, talking about the service and that she had made a little headway with some of the ladies. And they were still addressing some of the issues about her not reaching out to them, about her going ghost. And, 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 and going about her journey for a while to go and take care of herself. You know what I'm saying? So, Quad has exhibited a lot of selfishness when it comes to the friend circle. Sometimes, I will tell you that sometimes it's warranted, but it still pays to let somebody know how you're doing or where you're at or where you're going so people can, you know, when's the last time you talked to Quad Webb? Mm hmm And something happened, you know what I'm saying? But let's not forget she had a whole lot of life changes before the uh, this season started with the loss of her knees the death of another family member, a whole lot of shit going on. So she wasn't in the best of headspace. And then finding out, too, that her uh, ex-husband was going to be on with his new impending bride. That's a lot of shit to deal with, mentally, emotionally, socially. But this, has, should, this should have been a time that she should, should have been able to lean on her tribe and have certain discussions with the ladies without recourse. Um, but things began to heat up 
very quickly. I don't know why the fuck at the end of the day, they said Quad and Toya next to each other at the end of the, uh, the table. And while Quad was talking and making a gesture, she pointed her finger past, past Toya and Toya was getting pissed about it and smacking her hand and shit. They got the tussling in the hand, fighting and shit. And the people had to break it up. Now, the shit got very heated at, at, the, at the dinner table, okay? But they calmed things down. But when I saw the review with Quad and Heavenly and all of them talking about it on, on Heavenly's channel, they were saying a lot more took place that we didn't get to see on the camera. And that's what I'd be mad with Bravo about. Fuck all that shit. You know, let us see them act a fucking fool. If they're going to do hand fighting or a little slap boxing, let us see the shit. They done already broke character and demeaned themselves. They done already not really carried themselves as ladies should all the time. But I mean, I know, I always say, I know we need drama. That is what brings everybody to the show. So I'm just saying, fuck it. Let it fly. Let your freak fly, freak flag fry, fly. I can't get it right. Too many L's. That's a tongue twister or lip twister. Let your freak flag fly. Yeah. Just let it all hang out. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, don't, don't leave anything to, 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 to question. Let us see if they got into a little slap, slap box. Let us see if somebody's, you know, uh, 27 piece got shifted. Let us see if a bitch lace front glue had to come up off the front because the bitch had to pull it from the bite. We want to see that kind of shit. I don't sit here and pour up my wine just to sit up here and watch a bitch get drilled in in the box and bust out of that motherfucker uh, in living color. Because again, I say I don't know how she did it. Because even if I tried to agree to it, they would have had to do that scene like 75 motherfucking times. At some point, they would have came to the conclusion, we can't do this one. We, 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 we just don't cut this one out. You know, because I'm not going to get in that motherfucking box. Y'all drop down in the comment section and let me know if y'all would have been willing to get in that box just for theatrics, just to make your point. Would you let your friends orchestrate, uh, 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 what do you call it, a uh, friend invention by putting you in a pine box and wheeling your ass down at a St. Peter's up the aisle and sitting you up there in front of everybody only for you to jack, jump out that bitch like a jack-in-the-box? That kind of shit scares black folk at a funeral home. We don't fuck around no shit like that. So I don't, it had to be somebody of the Caucasian persuasion or somebody that's into some gothic shit. And I'm hoping that it's not Quad that came up with it because this is overboard. I mean, I know it plays into the plot because Phaedra has a funeral home, but this is over. This is overkill. Literally overkill. We don't like to see this shit. Black folk don't fuck around with this kind of shit. We not for, I'm not coming down to, first of all, our funeral start at 7. No later than 7 o'clock, you know what I'm saying, so we can get in there, view the body, Everybody walk the fuck in, sing a hymn, do a little screaming, holler over the basket and shit like that, throw a couple of flowers in, we, you know, leave the fuck up out of there, sing obeys and grace a few things, let the man do a couple of words and stuff like that, get the fuck out of there, and then nine times out of ten, if a funeral at night, that was just what, uh, the, the viewing of the body or whatever. The next morning when they come in and do the eulogy and all that shit, be coming in, sing and screaming, holler some more, you know, somebody sitting up there on the pew smelling mustard in a motherfucking, uh, 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 uh pussycat. You know, smelling like old Frito Lay. And then the man was hollering, flapping their arm, pissing, they ain't putting no goddamn degree up under them song bitches before they come up in here with all the clothes on, dressed to the nines and smell like a scum. But they're coming in, we're gonna have a service. And after that, we're gonna then we're gonna re go to the repairs and eat some Popeye's chicken. Cause ain't nobody really frying and cooking no chicken no more. Bitches is too bereaved to be doing any of that. You know, because Big Mama and them gone, they ain't frying the shit. They ain't down there cooking and, and carrying on any Esther them. I been, they would have shoved a daughter over her ass already. We done funeralized her 10 years ago, you know. She ain't here to make hot water cornbread and tell everybody, come on over yonder. Sit down and spill. You know, that kind of shit. Don't stand up too long. You finish growing all that old kind of stuff. While they back there still whooping up cakes and shit. Oh, don't get it twisted. Because mother was on a motherfucking deal. And them deaconess... Half them digging this nine to out of ten ain't got no goddamn sense. They all down there with uh, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, you know, arthritis. Arthur done fucked them up. They can't be down there with their whooping hand no more to my bitch. You know, mad me fucking lemon cake. Upside down, pound cake and pineapple pound cake. They ain't making that shit no more. They going right over there to Hebe's or Walmart and in the bakery section and sticking that shit in the oven and let you come in and smell all in the aroma. 
that's busting through the house. They ain't got time for that kind of shit no more. They old, they old and tired and they sleeping. They ain't fucking around like that. But the point I'm trying to make to you is we don't fuck around like this. So there have been no point of that. The, the, the day they'd have had this scene, because I wouldn't have been the bitch in the box, but the day they'd have had that scene and delivered me that motherfucking invitation, I'd have told them right now then, I ain't going to make it up. I'm, I'm at home stricken with something. I'm at home probably stricken with fear. I don't fucking know what it is, but the bottom line is I ain't going to show them. I'm not coming. I sent a reef in that bitch. I order a flower, a nice edible or some shit like that. And y'all can eat, suck on them uh, pineapple pieces and <laughs> strawberries. <laughs> At the repast when you're done, because I'll be motherfucked. We don't play that kind of shit. But in the end, I, I, this season does not even remotely gives us the idea that Quad and Toya are going to reconcile. Toya ain't here for it. Quad is, you, you know, superficially trying. It's just not working out. Toya's not taking the bait. And the ladies are still looking at Quad's side eye, you know, because she's missed a, you know, a few dinners or a few brunches and shit like that. But, I mean, as friends, it's okay to sit down and address your friend about her missteps and shit like that. But at the same time... You can't you can't tear a bitch down without lending them a hand to, to, to extend their hand to pick them up. You, you know I know Quad is always looking for some some kind of everybody say Quad looking for some kind of sympathy or something, but in this case I guess it's it's kind of due to her. A bitch them dealt with all kind of life changes and shit. She done lost child, family members, and whatnot, and not less of that. I got to be involved in a show that I've been on and, and made my staple in for quite a while now, and um, now I got to come back and film with my ex-husband and now his bride, his new bride, and I have to do all this shit out of the surprise, out of nowhere, because she always tells us, um, since it has started, that she didn't know that Gregory was going to be on the show until the last minute. And when I say bravo, baby, y'all some sneaky motherfuckers, baby. Y'all some shady motherfuckers down there at the Bravo. But, I mean, I don't know what else to hope for. It just seems like another time where it's more redundant shit that's being done over and over. There's always going to be a villain. There's always going to be a, 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 a hero. And, and and there's always going to be the lady in between and have to choose a side in which they're going to be on. And so they're always playing this tug of war of friends every time we watch an episode or every time we watch a season. So not much has changed over the last 10 years, as we can possibly see. It's still same fuckery going on, same fighting going on, you know... Um, same jealousy going on, same undercurrent shade and shit like that. So nothing's going to change. And the question is, would we ask anything to change? Me? Yes. Again, I would say, give me more. Give me more. Yes, this was a nice little spice that y'all added in two more ingredients. I say three more ingredients. Y'all brought Greg and, and, and Sweet Tea Dumbass up on here. And then y'all threw Phaedra up in the mix. So I mean, hey, cool. But at the end of the day, like I said... There's not much more we can really expect from this season, as I can see. It is going to be another push and pull, tug of war between the ladies and how they're going to proceed or how they're going to fall out and how they're going to be beefing at the end of the season by the time the reunion comes. So if nothing else, if we don't find out all the motherfucking deets in the season, guaranteed, rest assured, if nothing else, we're going to find out what the fuck's going on by the time the reunion. So I don't know. I'm just going to sit like the rest of y'all and watch and wait. Or as Faithy would say, I'm just going to sip and see. <laughs> but anyway, I guess that's all I got for this episode. I got to get ready now for Housewives of Potomac or some shit like that. And see how that's kicking and see how y'all like that. But uh, again, if this is your first video, please make sure to subscribe to the page. So that when I upload these videos or go live, you are one of the first ones to see these videos. Or jump in the live section and make sure to always comment um, on the video, the topic, and my opinion of the video as well. Please also um, hit that thumbs up button. That's the like button. Make sure to hit that button on every video that you watch, guys, please. And also make sure to share these videos. Share them with a friend or family member. Share them with somebody you like. Share them with somebody you don't like. Share them with somebody you love. Share them with somebody you don't give no fucks about because 9 to my 10, I'll be the glue that brings you guys together. And last but not least, I have to stop and say I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the shares. I do love the conversation down in the chat, in the comment section. Um, so keep up the good work. And of course, always love yourself first and foremost wholesomely and love on those in return who decide 
to love on you in the same way back because again we don't have time for laying yet we ain't got time for no waste we ain't got time to be wasted okay all right i will see you cousins on the next video holla